What up, nerds? My name is Clay Cooper from Prep Expert. I've got a perfect score on the SAT and on the ACT. And today, I'm going to show you a simple way to understand and solve circle, sector, and arc questions on both tests. So circle, sector, and arc questions show up on virtually every SAT and ACT. So it's really important that we know how to attack them. However, in my experience, most of my students have a really hard time with them. Uh, they get intimidated by them and they don't get them right very often. They think of them as being very difficult. I certainly understand that. Circle, sector, and arc problems can be very intimidating. We might think that we need to know a formula like S equals R theta, or that we need to be super familiar with geometry and the intricate relationship between the various parts of a circle to do well on circle, sector, and arc questions. But I'm here to tell you, circle, sector, and arc questions can be super easy if you just understand the one concept that I'm about to show you. So let's take a look. Here we have a circle with a sector cut out of it. Now the sector is always formed by two radii that go from the center of the circle to points on the circle, right? So anytime I have two radii, they cut out that wedge shape and that wedge shape, this part that I'm coloring in here, is the sector. The easiest way to remember that is this. If this circle were a pizza, that sector would be what? a slice, right? The wedge shape that we've cut out of the circle would be a slice if the sector or if the circle were a pizza. So sector with an S, slice with an S. That's the easy way to remember it. We can also remember what an arc is this way. An arc is a distance around the circumference of a, of a circle from one point to another. So from A to B, that distance around the circumference from A to B, we'd call that arc AB, which is usually denoted like this, a little curvy line over it. Um, and the easy way to remember that is this, again, if this circle were a pizza, what would that represent? It would be a crust, right? It would be the crust of one slice, the distance around the edge of the circle from A to B. And so arc has a C and so does crust. Making it nice and easy to remember. A sector is a slice and an arc is a crust. All right, now, every sector also has a number of characteristics, a number of attributes that are gonna be important. One of them that we just looked at is called the arc length, the distance around the perimeter of the circle, the circumference of the circle, from one edge of the sector to the other. In this case, it would be the distance around the circumference of the circle from A to B. We'd call that arc length AB. All right, that is one feature of the sector that's going to be important, the arc length. Now, the useful way to think about the attributes of a sector is to ask yourself what attributes of the circle as a whole do they correspond to? So let me say that again. Every attribute, every characteristic of the sector has a corresponding characteristic of the circle as a whole. The easy way to figure out which characteristic of the circle as a whole a characteristic of the sector corresponds to is to ask yourself, if I expanded the sector until it encompassed the whole circle, what would this characteristic become? So when I'm asking myself what characteristic of the circle corresponds to the arc length of the sector, I ask myself if I expand that sector until it incorporates the whole circle, what would arc length AB become? So what would the distance around the perimeter of the circle from A to B become if the sector were expanded to be the whole circle? It would be the circumference of the circle. So arc length will always correspond to circumference. Circumference can be written as 2 pi r. Again, 2 pi times the radius, that's the formula for circumference. So remember, arc length always corresponds to circumference. Now, another characteristic of the sector that is important is its area. You'll be asked about the area of a sector sometimes on the test. So the area of the sector, which I'll denote as A sub S. We need to understand what characteristic of the circle as a whole the area of the sector corresponds to. So you should be able to tell me by now. If I were to expand the sector until it incorporated the whole circle, what would the the area of the sector have become. It would have become the area of the circle as a whole, right? If I expand my slice until it's the whole pizza, then the area of the slice has become the area of the whole pizza. But the formula for the area of a circle is pi r squared. So again, I have a formula for that, pi r squared. Awesome. Now, the final characteristic of a sector that's going to be important is its central angle, denoted here on this diagram as theta. The central angle of a sector determines how wide it is, right? How wide the wedge piece is. If I were to expand the sector until it incorporated the whole circle, how wide would theta become? 
Well, it would then be the central angle of the circle as a whole, which we know is always 360 degrees. So again, theta corresponds to the central angle of the circle as a whole, which is always 360 degrees. So I hope you're listening because here is the single concept that you need to know to never have to miss another circle sector or art question ever again. You ready? In each case, what we have is a, a characteristic of the sector on top and a characteristic of the circle as a whole to which it corresponds written below. So again, on top is a characteristic of a sector, on bottom is a characteristic of the circle as a whole to which that characteristic corresponds. In other words, we could call each of these a part on top and the whole that it's a part of on the bottom. All you need to know about circles and sectors, to never miss another question, is that for any given circle and sector, this proportion must always be equal. It's that simple. If you can just remember part over whole always equals part over whole, then you never have to miss another one of these questions. So again, theta is a part of the central angle of the circle as a whole, which is 360 degrees. The area of the sector is a part of the whole that is the area of the circle, and arc length AB is a part of the circumference. So let's put this knowledge to work on a circle sector problem. All right, so here we have a circle sector problem, very much like the ones that you'll see all over the SAT and ACT. This one looks just like the ones that pop up on the test a lot. So let's take a look. In the circle above, arc AB has a length of six pi and the radius is eight. What is the value of theta? So the first thing I'm gonna do is label the radius with its length. That's a great place to start. It's always a good idea to mark things that are important on the diagram as soon as we know. So what is the value of theta? Now, what I'm gonna do is pick two of the three proportions that we looked at on the previous page. So we looked at arc length over circumference, area of the sector over area of the circle, and theta over 360. In this case, I wanna make sure that I pick the one that they asked me to solve for, and another one that I can complete based on what they've told me. So what have they asked me to solve for here? They've asked me to solve for theta. So I know one of the proportions that I'm gonna use is theta over 360, okay. Now I just gotta find what proportion I can set that equal to. I want it to be something that I can complete so that I can then solve for theta, right? So what can I complete? Do I know the area of the sector? I don't think so. They haven't told me the area of the sector. What about arc length? Well, now they have told me arc length. Okay, cool. I know that arc length is always proportional to what? Circumference in the same ratio that theta will be proportional to 360. In other words, arc length over circumference, arc length AB over my circumference 2 pi r will be proportional to theta over 360. Now all I have to do is fill out this ratio and then solve for theta. So they tell me arc length AB is 6 pi. So I plug in six pi for AB, and I know that the radius is eight, so I can plug that in down here. And now I have only one remaining unknown, which means I can now solve for theta. So I'm just gonna simplify. I know these pi symbols cancel, and what I'm left with is six over 16 equals theta over 360. If I cross multiply here, I get 16 theta on the right. On the left, I'm gonna get 2160, all right? And then if I divide each side by 16, I'm going to get 135 degrees for theta. And it's really that simple. Again, all you have to remember is that the part over whole relationship is always constant for any sector and circle. Pick the ratio that you need to solve for and pick the ratio that they give you enough information to know, set them equal to each other, and that's all you have to do to get the problem right. That's all I've got for you today about how to solve circle and sector questions on the SAT and the ACT. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to give us a like. You can also subscribe to Prep Experts YouTube channel for other videos just like this one. We'd also love it if you'd leave us a comment below this video. Let us know what you'd like to hear about in our next video. What do you want advice on from a two-time perfect score? Leave us a comment and we might feature your suggested topic in our next video. We also have a discount code in the description below this video. You can use that discount code on our website prepexpert.com for discounts on any of our products. You can sign up for a course with myself or another instructor, or you can sign up for tutoring if you'd prefer that. So until next time, keep working hard.